you have to be your best you because somebody that you haven't even met yet is waiting for you to be your best you so they can unlock who they need to be. And so don't cheat yourself, but definitely don't cheat, cheat somebody else as well out of what they can be because they need to see you at, they need to see your journey. They need to hear your journey. They need to, they need you to come in contact with them and see your best self and, and, and represent you in your best life so they can then unlock themselves and stuff that they're dealing with. Welcome to the Speak Your Success Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, successors? Welcome to another episode of Speak Your Success. And this is the show to where we bring on entrepreneurs and different individuals who are going after and really getting what they desire in life. And today, man, I'm really excited about today's guest. I'm going to go ahead and just get into the intro because I don't want to ramble. We're going to go ahead and just get into it. Um, so today we're here uh, with Amari Collins, graduate from North Carolina Central University with a bachelor's in English language and literature. Mr. NCCU, also uh, the founder and co-producer of the student-ran Eagle Access, former yeah. digital format content creator and senior digital video manager for the Carolina Panthers, and a six-year content creator for the NFL, okay, for the NFL, all right? <laughs> uh, and he, currently, he's the head of development of digital content for Iconic Saga and the co-host of one of my favorite shows, Fourth and one. Uh, welcome to the show, Amari. Amari, how you doing, brother? Man, I'm well, man. That's an unbelievable intro, man. I need to take that down and take that on the road with me, bro. I appreciate it. That's one of the best intros I ever got. So I appreciate you, brother, all as well. Man, awesome, awesome, man. Well, shout out to my producer, man. You, you already know, teamwork make the dream work. Yeah. There you, you go. You already know, man. You already know. Sure. Uh, yeah, man. So I want to go ahead and just, man, just go ahead and get into your story. I know we we're talking about you getting into your story. So, man, I, I don't, don't want to waste time, but I, I want to rewind it back, right? For, for the people okay. out there, I want to rewind it back. So starting at the beginning, your grandpa, your, your, your grandfather, he's the one who put the camera in your hand at a young age and he made mm -hmm. you the family videographer, right? What, what made you pick up literature over media? So... I mean, he made me the family videographer and host because you couldn't just hold the camera. You had to ask them questions, too, as well. Um, but what made me pick up literature over media when I first started? I really didn't even realize he put that in my hand until after he passed away and I was going through old videos and recordings. I'm like, yo, this is I've been doing this a while ago, not even understanding. But what made me pick up uh, like English or literature was uh, my first aspiration is I wanted to become an attorney, an entertainment attorney. And so that's why I went to North Carolina Central University. I loved the school, but I wanted to go to law school there as well. Um, and so that was my plan. One of my best friends, Austin Duke, he ended up going to the NFL. And that was my plan to be like, all right, cool. I'm going to be his sports agent. Um, but I picked up a camera while I was in college. And then instead of being a sports agent, I documented his path to the draft. And from, from there, it was just, it was a done deal. Everything started to open up. Man, okay. Okay, that's a, man, that's an amazing pivot. I mean, you know, just considering yeah. where, where, where you were and just looking at the two different dynamics of those, you know, focuses. So that's, that, that's, yeah. that's, that's pretty unique to hear, man. Yeah, yeah, man. So, yeah, it was definitely like God's will because I wouldn't even think of this. Um, and even growing up, I, I shied away from, but not wouldn't really say shy away because it was just my calling, but you know, even being in front of the camera doing things at first, that wasn't what I thought I was gonna do, but I had a natural. So my dad, um, Dwayne Collins, he was president of NAACP and Black Political Caucus. So I kind of grew up in front of the news cameras and you know, being at press conferences, at marches with him. Even if I wasn't speaking, I would always be, you know, at these rallies and stuff like that. So you seeing him doing interviews, you see him speaking out, you see him making speeches. He was an associate pastor too as well. So I kind of grew up with my dad, even going out with him in Charlotte, you know, people would stop and be like, brother Collins, I need your help here. Or, hey, that's brother Collins, X, Y, Z. You, aren't you the president of X, Y, Z? And so growing up and being being able to see that, um, you know, that, that, that was like eye opening for when it kind of is like now my time that like when people come up and speak to me now, it's kind of like, oh wow. Like, I feel like that's how my dad was. But then also too, 
um, you know, it made me shy away from it some because I'm like, you know, that really is it's a you have to it's time consuming and it's draining in some ways, but also too it refills you. But definitely like now, even having these experiences, God never makes mistakes, you know, and I, I actually get to see I was able to live this type of life on the outside looking in for my, my father and then also definitely with documenting Cam, I've been able to see millions of people stop him. And so now when it's it's so funny when somebody I'm out and somebody like, Oh, can I take a picture with you or can I Hey, you the guy from the show? And I'm like, yeah, that's me. You know, it's it's like I, I appreciate it. I re, I receive it now, and but I definitely know how to understand uh, understand and really like, gauge that type of attention. For sure, for sure, man. And hey, Omar, we're we're, we're definitely gonna hear a little bit more about your father later. Definitely gonna hear more about uh-huh. your father later, uh, man. But I was checking out the Jack Thriller interview, and I know you mentioned that that one of your mentors at the time, Chi Brown gave you advice mm-hmm. about learning how to be well-rounded in the media space. So now based on the journey that, that you've already, with, with the accomplishments that you've had and you know, the success that you have and the experience you've been able to gain, uh, what areas now in the media space are you still working on improving and perfecting? Yeah, so shout out to Chi Brown. Definitely he showed me, uh, you know, he just instilled so much knowledge in me to know how to do everything as possible. Um, and so that really helped so much in my maturation throughout this field. I think now that what I'm focusing on is is being a better host um, and all around. So from the listening to asking questions, being quick on my feet, being clear, um, you know, and direct with questions. Um, but I'm, I'm still like, even the other day, I was shooting something still. I'm still doing photos or videos here and there. Um, and then able to edit. So I wouldn't just have one facet that I'm trying to improve. I'm still trying to improve on everything. Like it's something new every day. I mean, especially when it comes to editing, it's like younger cats than me that just like come in and they can edit stuff crazy. I'm like, yo, how did you do that so fast? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) So I feel like a dinosaur in that space. Now that's kind of getting me over to like, you know what, let's just get to the hosting, co-hosting and like, you know, hosting by just by yourself too as well. And then also, producing and directing, you know what I'm saying? So being the executive producer of fourth and one, like that, you know, you kind of get this producer and you put that producer hat on and just building out everything. Gotcha. Gotcha. Gotcha, man. Yeah. Uh, so now, now I want to take, take a, take a slight pivot, right? Cause we, we're, we're talking about you first with the camera in your hand. Then we're talking about you a little bit in college. Now, now I want to talk about you, you winding up in Atlanta. All right. So, yeah. You know, see, seeing some of your story and, and seeing that you, you work for a husband and wife as a production assistant for their production company. And then later, mm-hmm. you know, you moved into their basement where, yeah. where you didn't have much, uh, but you had a camera and, and you had a dream. Right. How strong yeah. does your mind have to be for you to be sitting in the current reality? Right. Knowing that you have a dream, you have a desire, you have a goal, something so big that maybe family and friends couldn't conceptualize because they want the safe route for you. They want you to take the route with benefits and everything like that. So, so talk a little bit about, you know, sitting in that current reality, uh, but knowing that your passion is on the other side of what your family wants for you. Can you break that down for us a little bit? Yeah, so it's tough, right? And so in that situation, like I said, man, that was a struggle for me. Like my, I'm sleeping on a blow up mattress with a hole in it. You start with a full, full bed in the morning you just like waking up on the floor, you know what I'm saying? So Man. that was that, but instead of, and this is the key part of it, is like not even just a dream or not even just focus on what other people want for you. You gotta look at what God wants for you and what he's placing on your heart. And so that was the biggest thing for me is wasn't even just about my dream. Cause I probably would have gave up on my dream, but what God had for me is, you know, wh- what I'm living in. I'm still walking in that till this day. And I'm still, you know, that's what I pray that I'm able to receive and walk into what he wants me to do. And I think even then it's like, I was ready to pack my stuff up and move back to Charlotte and cancel all of this and take those jobs and take the opportunities I had. But even when opportunities come and it's not really what you feel that is convicted on your heart to do, I think that's when faith falls in, falls in line. It's like, so it's like, are you going to, and that's just a test. It's like God going to test you and say like, all right, this is right here, but are you going to trust me? Are you going to have faith in me? And I did. And so 
and and you know sometimes that waiver i'm not perfect uh, but i still do have faith and so i think that's what got me through and just even the story i told like one of my friends her mom called me out of the blue and we don't even talk like that her me and her mom and she just said it's in my heart to tell you to keep going don't give up and so you know the next day i got a phone call and i ended up meeting and started working with bet and doing some stuff right there like with them and so crazy story is like i've met them i started working with bet and doing some contract work there she was my producer at the time kristen myers that was in 20 like 17 now in 2024 she has just became the president of iconic saga so it's a full circle moment and you never know like who you gonna meet and so is a, god is the best of planners he's the best author for anybody's story definitely my story and so that's what I firmly believe in. Faith is what I believe in. Man. Well, family, I know y'all out there are enjoying this episode. I know y'all here in the water getting to a story. And we're going to come right back with just a little bit more after this break. What's going on, family? It's Jonathan Jones here. And if you haven't caught the latest episode of Speak Your Success, be sure to type in Speak Your Success Media on Apple, on YouTube, and on Spotify just so you can catch up. All right, successor, I'm going to see you in the episode. All right, family, we're back. We're about to get back into more of Amari's story. And man, Amari, is heating up, man. Is, is heating up. <laughs> is, is heating up. We just started. Yeah, man. We, we just, we, the, oven is pre, the oven is preheated, okay? The oven is preheated. <laughs> uh, so, Amari, in, in, a, in an article uh, titled Daring Towards Destiny with OG Collins Media by Tiffany Johnson. What up, Tiff? Uh, you, you were quoted as saying, I just fell in love with creating and dictating my own story, right? Yeah. So a lot of times you might be in front of the camera talking, but the editor or the person filming really has the power to cultivate the vision or to turn you into whatever person they feel like turning you into. And I wanted that type of power, close quote. Yeah. So now working with, with, with Cam Newton, yeah. how does it feel to finally have that type of power how does it feel to finally have that type of power and trust to curate, to structure, and to produce someone's life with this level of influence? I think it's good. I think it feels good. I think it, it comes over time. It's not a thing that you just instantly get into that situation and just have power. Like Cam is a big personality. He's he's bold. He he is very. He's a visionary. Um, so even with your vision, his vision trying to make those align is, you know, sometimes it's, it's great, sometimes it's tough because we both are like visionaries, right? So we might start on something and then by the end of the conversation, it's just like everywhere else. So I think it's good. And I think that's a part of being around Cam has really like made me stick to my guns on certain things. So it's, it's like, if you can get him to believe into it, I walk out the office and I'm like, bro, there's nobody else that can turn me down because if I got him to say yeah to it, then that's it. And not like he's not gonna say yes to anything, but he is very detail oriented in, 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 in being able to paint a picture for him to see something that's not there is, is something that I, I've been able to craft. Um, and and that's, a, that's definitely a attribute I've been able to work on. Um, and so I think it feels good to have that type of power. I think it comes with time, right? Because you know to have for a cam to trust you with his image, his brand, the things that he's doing that he's invested in and he like this is what you want to do but this was what's going to make it pop that took time like i've been working with him since what 2016 2017 mm -hmm. um and and just being able to walk in and him having that trust that's a level and that's the one thing that people i don't think really understand is like creativity is one thing right and somebody mm -hmm. can contract you out as a creative and like do what i say do it's one thing but when somebody say yo here's the canvas and just create what you feel, then that's different. That's a level of trust. You know what I'm saying? They, they have to trust your creativity. They gotta trust your vision. They gotta trust that you have their best, um, I guess, uh, uh, view or anything, interest. You know what I'm saying? They, they, you trust your best interest. So that's the biggest thing with him. And so uh, I, I, we're to that point um, and our relationship grows every day. And so it, it feels good. Talk a little bit more about like the relationship that y'all had, because you 
j just aren't working with him within the company. I mean, you've been documenting his life from with the yeah. Panthers to, you know, like I've like. Like I've seen the content with, with Cam in the house cooking for his kids. Like I'm, we're mm -hmm. talking about everything. We're talking about his lifestyle yeah. is, is being documented. Can, can you just talk, talk a little bit more about that relationship? Because even on social media, I'm seeing how y'all interact and engage with each other at events. Like y'all actually like each other. Like y'all are friends for yeah. real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you say we friends for real, he'll always make a joke. Like, man, I don't mess with you like that. But now nah, that's my that's my guy. You know what I'm saying? That's family um, at this point. It's definitely family. Um, and from docu, like you said, documenting his life every day to living with him, us living in the same space, that you definitely going to get to know the real. So the world sees Cam Newton. I just see Cam. And that's all, you know, that's what he is. Not all he is to me, but I know the real Cam. Without the Mashika hats, without the football, without Superman, like I know, you know, Cameron. Jarrell Newton, you know, and so inside and out. And so that's a brother of mine. Um, he's a really great person with a great heart. And I know some people are like, man, of course you're going to say that. But not honestly, like I've seen, when you're able to see all facets of somebody, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything that comes along with them, it's like, bro, you, you really get a great depiction of who somebody is. And, and, and he has a, a humongous heart. Um, he's willing to help so many people. Um, and we do have a close relationship. So it's not something that people see on fourth and one and it's like, oh, when the camera's cut, I don't talk to, I don't talk to Holmes. Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> I really talk to him. I really come over to the crib, like, you know, be around the kids, the family, like family trips, birthday trips, like we there, you know what I'm saying? So at this point, it's like, you know, you live life together with certain people. You have certain people in your life that is like, but we just live life because this is one of my homeboys and this is this and that. And so mm -hmm. I think we on like just our relationship is like, if you never paid me a day in my life, would I rock with you? And that's mm -hmm. a lot of times what people in his situation have to figure out and discern is like who's really rocking with me if money wasn't involved or if, you know, certain things I couldn't mm -hmm. give to them, would they still rock with me? And that's not that's not a question for my relationship or his relationship, our relationship together. So, you know, with or without you know what I'm saying? We still rocking. That's a good dude. And I love that, man. I really, I really love that. And like, just like we were talking about, like with you being in the limelight with him and, you know, just as like me and you talked offline, I told you how much I love fourth and one. And I love, you know, the, the dynamic that, that you all have, like, it, it always seems like you always have such high energy, Amari. Like you always, mm -hmm. your, your high energy, it always seems like you're on. How, how do you recharge? When do you recharge? Because, you know, there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that, man, they just trying to figure it out, Amari. They burnt out because they trying yeah. to be on all the time. Like, can, can you give us some tips, some strategy here? Yeah, I would say, number one, to recharge is pray. Um, so I, I, I definitely, that's my daily regimen, starting the day to pray. And I pray that, you know, people see more of God than they see Amari. You know, and so like being able to see more of God in me than, than they see me. And so that's one. Number two, uh, to recharge is, is to, to relax. You know what I'm saying? Like control what you can control mm. in that, that facet. So when I just say like relax, relax your nerves, your spirit, um, because everything you can't control. Some things aren't going to happen as you see fit and what you deem should happen. Um, but like I said, God is the best of planners. And then also take time for yourself. Like. There's been times in my life, I'm like, work, I got to work, I got to work, man, I'm grinding, I'm grinding. And I still do, and I'm finding a balance between life and, like, reality and real life. Um, but also having that balance, being able to come home. And sometimes you don't have, when you when you on go all the time, you might not have time just to take trips for a week or months at, at a on times. Because you're like, look, we got a schedule. I can't leave that long. So you got to make a place, even wherever you live, a place of relaxation and be your vacation. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing I do when I come home. I have an office that I work out of, but like, I don't do work in my room. I don't do work in my bedroom. I don't do, I don't, you won't catch me in my, yes, I might be writing in my room and like coming up with ideas in my bed or in my, like in my area, but certain rooms in my house, I don't even bring that type of energy because this place is only for relaxation. I'm not, I don't mix and mingle. You know what I'm saying? You know, you wouldn't catch me working out in the kitchen, you know what I'm saying? So don't catch me doing something else in my, my, my room. And so I just keep those energies separate. So when I show up, I can show up. Mm, that's good. That's good. You can show up fully, be, be fully present. Okay. That, yeah, that's good. yeah. That's good. Be where your feet are. Be where your feet are. 
Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like that. I like that. So now we're gonna yeah. now, now we're gonna transition. We're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about the impact of your father, man. Yeah. And man, your father, Dwayne Collins. Uh, he was a former uh, NAAC president of the Charlotte chapter, chair of the Black Political Caucus of Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Man, so yeah. just so just look, looking at and, and and really 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 honoring your dad, man. I, I want I, I got this question for you. Mm-hmm. Why did your dad's political career make you want to shy away from the camera at an early age? So so it's it's. it's, it's... I think when people see cameras, they're like, man, of course, like, why well, wouldn't you want that? But from when you start looking at leaders and you start seeing people in front of the line, like, people seldom, like, they really don't focus on how does that affect they, their circle or their family or their kids. And so, you know, I equated TVs and cameras and marches and speeches of a thing that consumed my father's time, you know? So I'm like, ah, oh, man, he's up there. He's not going to be able to be with me because he has to, He's always on go, you know what I'm saying? And so that's what I was like, man, I don't want that. I want to shy away from that. But obviously that's something that God placed in my life as as an attribute, as as one of my gifts to be able to speak to people, be able to, you know, be in front of that limelight. Like my brother, he does some stuff, like my brother Celine, but he's more like behind the scenes. But he also, he has his own podcast, you know what I'm saying? Now, uh, truly help for the podcast. And so like, it's crazy to see that in him. It's just in us to speak, to, to give knowledge, to give game to people, pour life into people. But yeah, at that time, as a you know a kid, you just like, look, I just want my dad. I don't care nothing about what y'all got going on. I just want my, my pops. And so I think that was something what made me want to shy away from the cameras at first. But when it's convicted on your heart to do so, it's like you gotta you gotta let loose and just surrender to it. Yeah, I, I get that. I get that for sure. So did did you did you ever feel like the editors created their own story uh, about your dad as someone different than, than the figure that you knew? Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? The same would be for my life, too, with my own kids. When I when I do have kids, when I do get married, you know, you see the real person at home. When that person, they Superman to the world. When they come home, they just whoever they are. Um, and so that was the different other narrative. Is like my dad doesn't have to be, he was an activist. That was his life. That's what he, how he lived. You know, I would wake up early in the morning, my dad lifts some weights or shining his shoes or preparing for the day. And it's like five, 6 a.m. in the morning and Malcolm X is on. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, man, we watched so much of that Malcolm, bro. Malcolm X stayed on repeat. He's in the shower. You hearing Martin Luther King speeches or Malcolm X speeches or like, um, like just so many people, Louis Farrakhan. Like you, you know, you walk around my house, you see, portraits of activists, you know what I'm saying, in my home, like, that wasn't just for the front of like, oh, I'm in front of camera, I'm being this, but no, that was the life that he lived, mm-hmm. but it wasn't all, stand up, son, you know, uh, recite this, no justice, no peace, like, nah, we went, no, we went like that, but it was just definitely, you knew who you were, you know what I'm saying, you knew that, you know, you, you had respect for yourself and respect for your culture and, and your race. Um, and so that was something definitely like that was always a steal from my day of birth, you know. Family, we're going to get ready to wrap this up in just a moment, but we yeah. got to pay some bills. We'll be right back with Speak Your Success. What's going on, successors? I'm Jonathan Jones. I want to tell you a little bit about the Speak Your Success podcast. This is geared to all my go-getters, all my dreamers, all my entrepreneurs. This is the platform just for you. Why, you might say? Because on this show, we're going to break down tangible and tactical tools that you can apply in your business to help you grow your business, to help you market your business, and even to help you navigate this whole entrepreneurial journey, right? I'm going to share my failures, I'm going to share my shortcomings, and I'm even going to share my successes with you okay every single monday you can expect to find the show on your favorite podcast listening platforms okay so apple spotify all those places just search speak your success media monday 9 a.m central standard time so once again this is jonathan jones and i'm here to let you know i want to see you there right don't meet me there beat me there speak your success media all right be sure to search that on instagram at speak your success media to where we can stay connected to where you can tell me 
about your experience of the show and I can even hear your thoughts, you know, ideas and your opinions. All right. Don't meet me there. Beat me there. Jonathan Jones. I'll see you in the next episode. And we're back, family, as we're just continuing uh, to, to continue to talk about uh, Mr. Dwayne Collins. Uh, Amari, man, just share a little bit more about your dad. I, I, I know I know you started speaking about him, but share a little bit more about your father. Yeah, so I, I obviously you heard the activism part. Um, he also was a wardrobe consultant, um, and he was voted uh, best dressed in Charlotte. I forgot what year, um, but he was a stylish person. Even when he passed away, like that was they read that in the article. You know, that was mm-hmm. one of the headlines once he passed away. Was like how his his sense of style. And then he also worked at Ralph Lauren. It was a crazy story. Is it's like I remember once Cam got drafted, you know, and he, he my dad came home and he was like, "Man, yeah, man, I seen the new kid being the quarterback." And he, he came through the store today. I helped him, you know. I was like, "Well, how is he?" You know, it's like the, our, our first big quarterback since like we had Jake Delhomme or whatever. So it's like, oh, this dude gonna stay? We drafted the number one overall pick. He's like, how is he? Man, he's just a kid. Like, man, all y'all the kids, man, just so cool, man. Just want to be so cool, man. And we went around the store, you know, picked out something. I think he had, he had like a, a purple, like uh, V-neck sweater, a sweater vest or something like that that he ended up putting together for him, with like a purple bow tie or whatever. And so it was uh, like a lavender color. And so I remember, crazy thing is, after my dad passed away, I'm going. My dad had a scrapbook, so he he would always cut out his newspaper clippings or stuff with fashion or stuff with. Um, that he would do and just he had a scrapbook and so I'm going through the scrapbook and this after he passed away right and so I come across the picture of Cam in his first press conference in Carolina after his first game and this with him this the actually outfit that him and my dad picked out and my dad had like the receipt from what he purchased from him and so I was just like yo it's a small world because it's like my dad was like you know he already met him before and so Cam doesn't realize, he doesn't, he doesn't remember that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had to take a picture of him, like, yo, he met you. But he always, from time to time, he's like, man, the way you describe your pops, man, he would have been, I would have, it would have been cool to really, like, meet him, talk to him. Uh, and so, man, it's just a full circle moment, though, bro. Like, and, like, God makes no mistakes. Like I said earlier, it's like, he's the best of planners and the best author to every story. So, uh, definitely, like, that was something, like, that was just cool. And now it's a full circle moment now, you know. Wow, man! I know every time I see Cam now with with Polo on, because I seen that I seen that one episode where y'all talking about Polo going back and forth. So now every oh, time yeah. I see him with Polo, man, I'm 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 gonna think of you and I'm gonna think of your pops, man. Yeah, man, yeah. So yeah, my pops was super strong. Hour going, my mom, she was the same. She is the same way. She's a people's person, so I think I get that from her. She was more of a people's person than my dad probably was. Uh, and and you know like she, she there's they're a good balance they were a good balance my dad was more strong in his way my mom was strong too and is strong her way but she's very much more talkative very much more like my dad would talk on camera and talk in certain groups but my mom was gonna talk talk to you period you know what I'm saying and so she she has family in her heart you know what I'm saying so and what I mean by that that's what I think I received from her is. It, you don't have to be my blood to be my family or for me to take you in as such or me to be good to you. So I think my mom, she has instilled that into my heart and my brother's like, you know, you keep family in your heart and that doesn't just share the last name. That's, you know, whoever you can create as family. It's the, it's the dynamic, it's the feeling, it's the understanding, it's the love, it's the loyalty. All of that embodies, you know, what you hold in your heart and who you deem as family. And so. That's that would really sum up the woman that my mom is, because yeah. she was the one. My dad was out, you know, doing everything activism. You know, mom was out home holding it down. You know what I'm saying? And so that you know, she kind of held, not kind of, she held the household together because you know she was, she was that rock at home. Mm, man, shout out to mom. Shout out to mom, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mama Collins. Yeah, shout out to her. Yeah. Uh, man, so Mario, we're, we're, we're gonna get ready to wrap this up, man, just in a moment. But I, I want now, I want to go and I want to talk about just as you've been going through the entrepreneurial journey, right? Mm-hmm. You and I both know that there's many failures. You, you both, both, you and I both know like there can be times to where people want to give up, wishing it could be easier. But you were determined to fulfill your dream of having your own media company, which you were able to accomplish. To a person mm-hmm. that's at the crossroads right now like you, they have faith, 
they have confidence and they have experience in their field. What advice would you give to them? Man, the word perseverance, um, you know, that's really it. It's like, keep going. It's like, and I, uh, uh, gosh, motivational speaker, what's my man? Uh, Eric Thomas uh -huh. was like, man, you in it now, like, get a reward from it. You know what I'm saying? You already going through the storm. Go ahead and get a reward from it. And so that's my thing. It's like, bro, if it's already painful, if it's already, it's like, it already sucks. Yeah. And, like just finish it. Like just keep finish the job. Keep going. It's like you done made this much headway. And anything, if it was easy, anyone would do it. For sure. You know. And it, yeah. So if everybody's not doing your path, or everybody's not 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 in the same seat that you're in, and it sucks at the time, you're like, bro, like it's that's just that time. But the reward is going to come. It's it's going to be better on the other side. And so I know when you. When you're going through it, it's like, bro, I'm the only one that cares sometimes. I'm the only one that see the vision. I'm the only one that's working. I'm the only one that's staying up late. You know, like, keep going. Keep going because somebody that you don't know is seeing it. And that was the biggest thing for me is, like, you have to be your best you because somebody that you haven't even met yet is waiting for you to be your best you so they can unlock who they need to be. And so don't cheat yourself, but definitely don't cheat, cheat somebody else as well out of what they can be because they need to see you at, they need to see your journey. They need to hear your journey. They need to, they need you to come in contact with them and see your best self and, and, and represent you in your best life so they can then unlock themselves and, and stuff that they're dealing with. So that's something that I keep in my mind when I when I want to give up because it's still there. Since I'm like, man, bump this, bro. I'm, chill, I'm ready to chill out, chill out. But it's like, look how far you came. And I think about that blow up bed, you know what I'm saying? Where I first started to now, like, you know, when you buy a home or when you, you know, living different, it's like, bro, you started on a, you just came out in this city on a blow up mattress with a hole in it. Look at you now, you know what I'm saying? And so um, God is good, bro. And, and just me staying steadfast on the goal, I could have did something different, but I didn't. And I'm seeing where it, where it led me, you know, and where it's continued, continually is going to lead me, you know? Um, and so I'm excited for the future. You know, I'm thankful for my past, but definitely excited for the future and, and, and focus, man. Focus. I like that. I like that, man. I like that. So there's one question I like to always ask my guests. Uh, and, you know, this question is, who's coming to dinner? So if you have the mm -hmm. opportunity to where you can invite three people over to sit down, have a meal, have a conversation with you. Who, mm. who would you invite to dinner to, to, to sit down, have a talk? Omari, who's going to be sitting at the table with you? Oh, that's tough. I feel like it's like two different dinners. It's like, are, do you want people out of your past? Because if it was my past, I would want my, me, my granddad, my brother, and my father to sit down. You know what I'm saying? But if it's like different people that you see in the world, I would definitely want, hmm, I really feel like I want to sit down with a Pharrell. Um, he's so he's so different. Um, I would want to do like a Jay-Z. Um, I would want to do, hmm, man, that's tough. You said three? Three people, yeah. Who, who who you got? You got you got three people. I mean, I I mean, I guess you can break two tables, but you know, we typically we typically go three or more. <laughs> oh my goodness, man, that's tough. I'm, I would say, I would say for real because I love his business and his creative ability from the creative aspect. I would do like a like a Bill Gates just to get his business acumen. Mm -hmm. um, and I would want somebody that's not like I just want. I want somebody unapologetically black, like that's just like, just bold, like, man. I would just do like a Malcolm X. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, just that that'd be wild, bro. Like you, you got all the all the elements. So, yeah, that would be wild. I'd be interested to see. Wish I could sit down with Jesus too. Oh, <laughs> what's up, my guy? What's up, baby? What's up, baby? You lay some hands on me, baby. <laughs> oh, that's
that's funny. That's funny. Oh, man. Well, man, Amari, man, we appreciate you t taking this time, man, to swing by Speaker Success. Uh, brother, please let people know where they can find you, follow you, and connect with you. Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram at OG Collins. Um, I'm on Twitter, uh, uh, 4th and 1 Peggy. Uh, also follow 4th and 1 on YouTube. Um, so follow me there. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook, Amari Collins. If you Google Amari Collins, you'll find me on my Facebook and all that. I'm not there as much, mostly Instagram. And then also, if you want to find me in person, August 16th, we'll be in New York, a live show. August 16th at Fanatics Festival. Um, it will be at 6 p.m. We're going live, 4th and 1. We'll be there. Cam Newton, Amari Collins, Boogie and Peggy, out there on the stage, center stage in New York for Fanatics Fest. Big city, bright lights, big talent. Yes, bro. We're super excited. So it's different from what you're going to get from on the screen. You're going to get it live and direct. Don't miss it. It's an experience. It's the start of something new. And always catch us every Wednesday, as of right now, every Wednesday, 4th and 1. Get ready for this football season. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be bananas. I'm letting you know. Caution sign, warning sign, all of that is going down. Straight like that. I love it, man. I love it. We're going to have all those links down below in the show notes. Uh, but family out there listening to the Speaker Success, this is Speaker Success Media Production. Be sure to... Uh, subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Just type in Speaker Success yeah. Media. And family, I'm Jonathan Jones. And please remember to speak your success, believe in your greatness, and please, please, please continue to create the life and business of your dreams. Why would you and why should you live any other way? <laughs>